Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I apologise that I haven't uploaded in about a week. I've been trying to work out why this exists and it's taken me as long. Uh, this is the Ryzen 5 8400F and yeah, as you can probably tell, I'm not too enthusiastic about it. So this has appeared on the market here in the UK for about £165, which makes it £15 to £20 cheaper than the Ryzen 5 7600, the CPU I'd recommend at less than £200. You might be thinking, well, 8400F, that's a bigger number than 7600 or even 7500F, so surely it's the AM5 CPU to buy, right? It has six cores and 12 threads, and to be fair, it isn't that bad, but let me talk to you about why it may not be the right choice. So as a gaming CPU, the Ryzen 5 8400F is fine when paired with a discrete graphics card. I mean, I paired it with a 4070 Super, and even at 1080p, although it's definitely the limitation at this resolution, it held up fairly well. Fair enough, in those more CPU-intensive titles, there were a few noticeable issues, especially with the 1 and 0.1% lows, which is to be expected with a 6-core chip uh, when paired with a higher-end graphics card. Now, the initial thing I noticed was that the 8400F only allowed the 4070 Super to run in PCIe X8 mode. This is because there are 20 total PCIe lanes, and therefore it's not going to run in X16 mode, the graphics card that is, unlike uh, what it would do with the 7500F or 7600. Furthermore, the 8400F has less L3 cache, just 16 megabytes compared to 32 uh, that the 7500F and 7600 has. And of course, there's the issue with the lack of integrated graphics, which I guess is fine, but I would argue that the money you're saving, 50 to 20 pounds, um, isn't worth the sacrifice, no matter if it seems quite small. Did I mention there's no PCIe 5.0 support either? Just PCIe 4.0 with the 8400F, which probably isn't a big deal to most, but still worth mentioning. So far then, we have a CPU that's got a bigger number as a name than the 7500F and the 7600, but the L3 cache is cut in half, and from my initial impressions, uh, this means it performs slightly worse in most gaming scenarios. I will have a full comparison video coming soon, but this is my albeit brief first impression video, just to give you an idea of what this chip is all about, because you may have seen it on the market, you may be contemplating whether or not it's right for you, and honestly, I'd just go straight for the 7600 if it's a little bit more, and of course, consider the 7500F as well, because that has 28 PCIe lanes, PCIe 5 support. Um, it doesn't have integrated graphics, but again, that's going to be the slightly better performer from what I've tested thus far, though. As I mentioned, there'll be a full benchmark suite of comparisons coming soon. The 8400F is more like a cut down 8600G APU than it is an upgrade from a 7000 series 6 core CPU. It's like the 8600G without the iGPU and with a slightly reduced clock and max turbo speed. So you're getting all the same things essentially uh, minus the integrated graphics a reduction in clock speed. And for that reason, I'm, I'm really struggling to see why it exists. If you live somewhere, let's say, where the 8400F is significantly cheaper than a 7600 or the more elusive 7500F, um, then it may be worth buying. Of course, if, if it's significantly cheaper, that is, or if for whatever reason, the 7000 series chips aren't available where you live. But if that was the case, then I'd perhaps consider an Intel alternative instead. It's not all bad. As I said before, the 8400F is an okay performer, especially at higher resolutions. You know, if you pair this with a higher end card, the PCIe X8 limitation, or limitation isn't really going to affect things in terms of frame rate numbers that significantly, to be fair, um, at least not from what I've seen. But it does, once again, make me wonder why you should settle for that sacrifice if you live somewhere where the 7500F is available or the 7600 is available for not much more money. And that's essentially what it boils down to. I can't really get past that point. I can't see why the 8400F exists really, but maybe I'm missing something. Actually, I am. What I should say is that I found the 8400F to be a lot more stable with my 6400 megahertz memory. I use 
32 gigs of 6400 MHz DDR5, and setting it at this speed in the BIOS was actually a lot, not simpler, but it was um, a lot more reliable, let's say. I didn't have any issues yet. In the past, when I've used a 7500F, I've tried to set my RAM to at least 6000 megahertz. I have had a couple of blue screen problems. So in terms of memory support, it does seem, at least in my experience with the board I'm using, the X670E Pro Wi-Fi, the 8400F perhaps has a better memory controller or it works better with higher speed memory. So that's worth considering. There was one last thing, and this was pretty weird. Now, as I've mentioned, the 8400F does not have integrated graphics, hence the F suffix at the end of the name. However, when I opened up Device Manager, there was a Microsoft Basic Display Adapter listed there as if the integrated graphics hadn't been fully disabled. You know, I spoke about how this is basically a reduced or cut down 8600G. I couldn't actually get these graphics working though. I did try to install 8600G Radeon graphics to see if we could bring integrated graphics back to this F series CPU. I just find it a bit odd that they don't seem to be entirely disabled. The hardware ID from Device Manager didn't actually come up as a GPU solution either, which was a bit odd. I also plugged my HDMI cable into the motherboards port and then fired up the system with the 8400F in it and no graphics card. And my monitor also detected a signal, which was strange, though I didn't get a display. As I said, it's almost as if the iGPU hasn't been 100% disabled. It's sort of still there in the background. If I can get it working, I mean, I'm going to keep trying, but that would be something pretty cool. But no such luck as expected. I mean, this is an F series chip after all. MSI Afterburner also detected a second GPU, though it couldn't work out what it was. To finalise then, uh, we should mention that this does come with a stock caller, same as a 7600. It comes with a Wraith Stealth, so it's adequate. Um, it does run a little warmer than 7000 Series 6 core chips from what I've seen. It didn't have any trouble hitting at least 80 degrees in some titles so it ran a little warmer than I like to see especially with the stock cooler which fair enough it does remain pretty quiet even under heavy load but it could probably do with spinning up a bit faster to try and keep the uh, um, the CPU cooler as it were or you'd be better off with an aftermarket cooler which is going to make up the difference in price between the 8400F and the 7600 anyway so once again just buy that. That's all for this one. I can't, I can't get excited about this thing. I'll have some comparisons soon, but if you see an 8400F in the wild, you want to purchase it, my advice would be consider your other options very carefully before you do so. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon.